Hey everyone, in today's Photoshop video, I want to show you how to take a low resolution logo like this one and turn it into a very high resolution, in fact, a vector file that you could infinitely scale, open in Illustrator, and even print. Let's go ahead and start from scratch. I just downloaded this from Google and I'm going to go ahead and open it with Photoshop here. And this is pretty low res here. In fact, if I go to image and then show you the image size, you'll see that it's only 750 pixels by 42, but the resolution is only at 96. Now, typically we want a much higher resolution, especially if you want to print. So I'm going to go to 300 with this and then I'll show you how to do everything else. So the very, very first step is after you open your logo here, and it doesn't matter if you have a white background or it's a PNG file with a transparent background. First, we're gonna go to image and go to image size and go ahead and change the resolution here to 300. And then resampling, you could make sure this is turned on and you could either do this enlargement, biocubic smoother, that should be the one by default, I sometimes try Preserve 2.0 also and make sure my noise level here is at 100. So if you want to follow along, go ahead and put these settings in and press OK. Now obviously it made the image much bigger. So you could press Command or Control 0 to have it fit your screen if you really zoomed it in in your case. Next, if you have any colors in your image here, like I have a red color here, we need to save that color because in the next step, we need to change this to black and white. So all I do for that is I pick this eyedropper tool right here. I is the keyboard shortcut. And I select whatever colors I have in my logo. In this case, I only have one. So I'm going to click on it. And it's going to give me that one. And if I click this box right here, this is the color I picked, right? So the value for it here is FF021B. I need to either save this on a document or I could just add this to swatches. So I'll select this in this case and I'll call this YouTube logo here and I'll add it to my current library. Okay, so then we could come back to it under this library tab over here, right? This is the YouTube logo we just created under our libraries tab. Now we could actually turn this into a black and white image. One of the easiest way is select this layer here, come up to image, go to adjustments and there's an adjustment right here. Desaturate, you also have black and white. I'm gonna just do desaturate. We'll just turn it into black and white for me. Now, if you don't have a white background, you actually will add one in this step. All you have to do is make sure this square on the back here is white. If it's not just selected, I make sure it's on the corner here and it's white. Then you just come up here to layer, new, and layer from background, because your background color is white. So if you select it, it will make the background white. In my case, that's what I already had, so I didn't have to do it. But if you have a PNG, especially if you see the background or a different color background, I recommend you do that step right now. Now, in this step, we're gonna add a blur, but before you do that, I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this layer and actually convert this to a smart object. It's gonna apply our blur a little bit differently. So make sure you do that. And then come up to filter, go to blur, and then add a Gaussian blur here, okay? And now if I click this box just over here, just so I get a better look, and let me zoom in to explain what I'm doing. I'm just gonna smooth out these edges, right? So by default, you see how they're kind of look low resolution here on the edges. But if I, as, if I raise this, I could kind of blur that out. So I need to go all the way to four or so, even a little bit higher to blur that out. I'll press okay. And don't worry if it gets blurry, we're fixing that on the very next step. Now I'm gonna select this layer again. I'm gonna add an adjustment layer and I could do a levels one. And let me show you what the levels adjustment layer does. It's gonna show up right here. And what I need to do with it is I need to actually bring it in, okay? And I'll bring the white down. So I'm bringing the white down and I'm bringing the black up and look what it's doing to my image. It's kind of bringing it right to shape over here. Now, I don't wanna do it too much over here. And if it still doesn't look sharp, that means you just have to like too much blur. So you'll need to go a few steps back and fix that blur. But it should look very, very smooth now on the edges. So just make sure you play around with these sliders till you get to something like this. And since I did this as an adjustment layer, I'm gonna select both of my layers. So I'm gonna press shift here and I'm just gonna merge them 
so they're just one layer okay so I'll just go ahead and merge layers now I have one layer here now if I took any colors away from my logo if I didn't have a black and white logo like this I need to bring it back and it's pretty simple to do that all I have to do is select this object here so I'm gonna go over here and do a quick selection and select this object here and I'm gonna choose the bucket tool here so the bucket tool and I'm gonna change my foreground color to the color of the swatch now if I don't remember what color that was if I didn't write down this number I do need to go here to my library and make sure I know what I have here right so this is the number I could always get it from there but with the bucket tool if I click on it it will fill in for me now let me zoom in because I want to show you let me press command D or control D on a Mac to deselect and sometimes you see the line here so you'll have to select the line and click a couple times for it to actually fill in now that's better let me zoom way back out okay and once we make this a vector we don't even have to worry about any issues with resizing it now the only thing left here is we need to get rid of this white background so the magic wand tool let's go ahead and choose that there's a number of ways you could choose a white background but I'm gonna select this layer I forgot to select it click this and then press delete now a lot of times if you have shapes inside like this you'll have to select those and press delete on those two so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now we need to change it to a vector right we did fix it now it's pretty much ready to go if you want to just use it here but the whole point of this video was saving this as a vector file that could infinitely scale later right come over here to the image right here of your layer and if you hold down control on PC and command on Mac where you get this little tool right here this little shape click it it basically just selects everything for you okay and after you do that if you select the marquee tool over here the rectangle marquee tool and then right click on your selection there's an option here that says make work path if you select this you could type in a tolerance one or two is fine I'll just type in one here press OK and then you have to do one more thing here you have to come over and click on this if you hold it down it will give you the direct selection tool choose that and now right click again over here and what you want to do is create a vector mask okay there you go and look at what happened to your thumbnail over here or your layer preview and basically now if I just click away and let me just choose my move tool this right here if I scale it up I'm just gonna choose this right here just to show you if I scale it up it's a vector now I don't I don't really lose any resolution when I scale this up right and I could save it as a vector file so I could go to file I could go to export and export as which is typically how I save something as a PNG or JPEG but this time I could choose SVG and now I have a vector file if I save it with transparency at that high resolution but it doesn't matter because it's a vector right so your resolution now is not relevant you could scale this as high as you like so I know it's not a super simple process but doing this gets you the best results as far as turning a low res file into a vector file and if it doesn't look quite right just remember play around with how much you blur and then how much you use the level tool to sharpen back up that's really where this whole process takes place I hope you found this useful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for easy to follow creative tool videos covering Photoshop and other Adobe products and I'll see you next time